All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CCMP and CCIE Collaboration Roadmaps webinar. Um, let's see, and live stream. So for today, first and foremost, we want to say thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. We know how hard you all work and how busy you can all get. So we really greatly value and appreciate you taking the time to join us for the session today. Um, today, we'll be joined by both uh, by Stacy Stevens, who is the program manager for the professional level collaboration certifications program, as well as Ben Ning, our CCIE collaboration program manager. Um, ben and Stacy will give us a detailed review of the latest updates to the collaboration programs, as well as a, a overview of the certifications roadmap for the certifications program overall. Um, and we will also hear from one of our essential subject matter experts and technical leader, Bobby Reichardt, um, who will go so through some of the details of the professional level uh, uh, updates to the recent updates to the exams. And we have some wonderful colleagues supporting the Q&A today, so we want to thank them for their help and answering any questions folks might have as we go through the presentation today as well. And before I hand off to the presenters, we'll do just a couple of quick housekeeping notes. Um, yes, the recording will be made available after the live event today. Um, we have a, a great learning plan for collaboration on the Cisco Learning Network, as well as some follow up um, open discussion threads on the Cisco Learning Network related to the session today. And all of the information will be posted in both of those two places. And all of the attendees will be uh, sent a follow up email with instructions for how to access the recording after the session today. Um, let's see, Q and A wise, as the session goes, um, we're very happy to take questions throughout the entire session. We do ask that folks that are attending the webinar portion of this event um, use the Q and A module right here in WebEx to submit any questions you might have for the panel. Um, that just makes managing the flow of those questions a little bit easier than the chat window. Um, and we'll do our best to answer as many questions as we can throughout the live session. However, like I mentioned, we do also have an open discussion thread on the Cisco Learning Network in the collaboration community. So please be sure to pop over there after the session as well. Leave us some feedback, any comments, but also any questions that you might still have after the session and the group and the community will be happy to help answer questions um, afterwards as well. Um, as you exit the live webinar portion of this event today, um, you will be redirected to that discussion thread as well. So no, no, uh, have no fears on where to find that. You'll be redirected to that and it will also be included in the follow up email after the event. Last but not least, if you happen to have any audio problems throughout the webinar today, if you're in the WebEx portion of the webinar, um, there's a toll free call in number posted in the chat window and I'll post that again here in just a few moments. And typically, if you um, have any audio streaming issues, the toll free call in number will resolve those issues for most most of the instances. So with that, let's see. Let me make sure that Stacy, you have the presenter role and we will make sure that you're unmuted again. And Stacy, we are ready to roll. Great, awesome. Thank you so much, Matt. And again, like Matt said, thank you everyone for joining us. We really appreciate it. We know you all are very busy in your work and personal lives. So thank you for taking the time to join us today to hear about some certification uh, collaboration updates. I'm Stacy Stevens, as Matt mentioned, I've been managing the CCMP collaboration track for about 17 years. And I'm again, happy that you're here with us. So as far as the certification portfolio, you can see here we have about we have four levels of certification exams. We have the entry level, the associate, professional, and the expert level. And as many of you are probably familiar with, the engineering level is where our CCMP exams um, that the collaboration exams fall under. And then we also have the software track which is the DevNet automation exams and the cyber ops track as well. And we'll be going into this a little bit deeper here in the next slide. Whoops, one too many. So this is a, this is a screenshot of all of our certification tracks. And up in the top left, you see the CCNA exam, which as many of you know, most used to consist of many CCNA exams, but now we just have the one CCNA. 
and then we have the CCMP trucks, which are five five core exams, the Enterprise Security Service Provider Collaboration Data Center. And in order to get your CCMP certification, you need to pass the core exam along with one of the concentration exams for that same track. So you can see here for Enterprise Core, you have the six different choices along with at the very end in dark blue, the automation exams, which is one of them as well. So it, passing the core exam in one of those concentrations will get you your CCMP certification. And for the IE track, if you pass the, N, the NP core exam, along with your lab exam, you will get your CCIE certification. And then underneath that, we have the DevNet associate exam on the left, which is the more entry level exam. We have the DevNet core along with the four concentrations. And then again, the DevNet expert, and it's the same as above where if you pass the, the core exam along with one of the concentrations, you will get your CCMP certification. And then at the bottom, we have our cyber ops track, which again is the associate, the NP level and the expert is coming soon in the, in the near future. So what's new with Cisco certifications? We did a recent minor revision for the collaboration and data center track. And what that means is instead of waiting about three years to revisit all the blueprints, go through them, take out you know, the, the, the technology and information that is no longer relevant, add the new information in and make it you know, a major revision and go from a you know, version 2.1 to a 3.0. We're now doing a yearly minor revision. And so when we released the collab and all of our new version 1.0 exams back in 2020, the exams for collaboration, the CCMP track were at version 1.0. And when we just did our minor revision that went live last month, April 20th, it's now a version 1.1. And what that means is we got together with many SMEs and people from the BU and looked at all of the exam blueprints and decided what technology we no longer want in the exams, what's not relevant, added new technology in, and we didn't make more than a 20% change to any of the blueprints. And when we added things in, we added them at a level that was a lower level to not disrupt the people that are currently studying for the exams. And so the, the information that was added was will most likely be at a describe or an identify level in, instead of a troubleshooter configuration level. And as far, like I said, as what has changed is we're now going to this new model where we are visiting all of the blueprints every year instead of waiting the three to five years. We are not doing any, um, you know, anything more than 20% changes in these minor revisions. And then when we get to the three to five years we'll go through and do a total you know, rehaul on them and make more than 20% changes. And at that point it will go to a you know, 1.2 to a 2.0 or a 3.0, whatever number we're currently on for the version. And we're doing this to allow to align with rapid technology that's evolving and to ensure that our blueprints are relevant for the job roles that are out there today, preparing for the future, and of course, removing any obsolete technologies that you know are no longer relevant in the collaboration track. And here we have the certification roadmap, and this is just a snapshot of exactly what we're doing with each track for each quarter. And as you can see here in Q1 is when we started to do the review cycle for data center and collaboration. And we met with SMEs, like I said, and people from the business unit. We you know, had multiple meetings, went over the blueprints, decided what was gonna be in these new blueprints, version 1.1. And that all happened in August to October. And then in Q2, November through January is when these blueprint changes were actually announced to the public that it was coming. And then in Q3, which I said last month, February 20th, is when these new blueprints were released for, and it, you see here in yellow, which is the, the track that I'm referring to as far as the data center and collaboration was Q1 for the review. And then we went into the announcement and then Q3 is it's in data center and collaborations in green. So that's when those exams went live. So if we look in Q3 right now, we have service provider and CCNA that's, that are in the review cycle. 
and Security and Enterprise just got announced as far as when those will go live. So we're gonna be doing this every year. So if you look at Q1, again, here at the top of the third section over, you'll see again in, in review is data center and collaboration because it will already be time to visit those tracks again and do another revision. So this is um, the roadmap that we're that we are working with going forward. And again, we think that this will be a, you know, a great thing to do. We can get rid of technology that's no longer relevant, add new technology in, and we don't have to wait that three to five years for the major revisions like we used to do in the past. So I'm gonna hand it over to Bobby. And Bobby is gonna go ahead and give you the updates and the preparation resources. Hello, everybody. Jump to Bobby. If you, I'm so sorry, Bobby. Bobby, uh, yeah. Stacey, if you don't mind, before we jump to Bobby, just one quick question that did come up from um, Rodrigo that actually comes up quite a bit on the community forums itself as well. I thought it would be uh, very worth and timely uh, just answering the question real quick if we're up for that. Um, Rodrigo would like to know if I took the core version 1.0 exam. Can I take the concentration exam revision uh, version 1.1 to get the CCMP or does he have to go back and retake the core exam, uh, the version 1.1 in order to earn the CCMP? And I think we may have just lost Stacy's uh, audio and visual and video, so I'll just answer the question, and then Bobby will get going with your presentation section. And Rodrigo, um, you do not need to retake any exams. You can combine version 1.0 with 1.1 and be uh, and earn your full CCMP collaboration. So, um, for anyone else that might have been wondering the same thing, um, within the the um, Three year time frame, as long as you take those two things, those two exams together within three years, you will earn your CCMP. So, with that, thank you very much, Bobby, for allowing me to uh, pop that question in here. Absolutely. And let's make sure that we've got you with the presenter role and we'll get rolling here. Okay, Bobby, you should be all set. Hello, everybody. This is Bobby Reichart. I'm a technical leader at Cisco. I've been working at Cisco about 16 years. I've been working as a, a subject matter expert with Stacy for seven plus years and working to making our certifications valuable so people will want to keep earning them. And I appreciate you guys just showing up on your busy schedules. So I, I want to actually add a little predicate to there. There's been some, some substantial changes in there, but under still this 20% as Stacy stated, that these do not indicate of any end of life or end of support or for any equipment or anything like that. If you have a question on that, that would be best to reach out to your account manager in that kind of situation. With that, I would like to start with our course sir, uh, exam right now. So one of the things that we, we noticed that it's changing in there is ISDN is going away. MGCP is not as used as much as, to, as much as it used to be. So the SIP uh, portion of the exam has been ex expanded and removing the ISDN and MGCP. Though if you understand SIP, I'm sure you can uh, do anything with ISDN or MGCP since there have been very established protocols out there. Another thing that, they, that we removed out of here is IMMP. IMMP is being not replaced, but given the option to use WebEx, uh, IMP will still be there just because there's some customers due to securities or requirements, IMP will be there. Uh, also, the, if, you, if you notice in there, the WebEx app has now become the uh, uh, app for choice over Jabber. Again, Jabber is not going away. I'm, uh, the WebEx app still uses the same configuration as Jabber, so we just updated it with a newer application in that. Uh, also, another thing is, is since customers are now standardizing on one codec across, media resources are not as popular as they're used to. They still are used depending on the situation, but and again, in this situation, there's no reason to be testing you on something that's not used as much as it used to be. And a lot of things also that we uh, we're going to be uh, pushing on is the OAuth on there. A lot of the uh, mobility is increasing. You know, most of the people that are working from home now or working from almost anywhere, OAuth is an integral part of making sure you stay logged in on different uh, applications. And that covers the core portion. So when we go into the talking to the applications, again, uh, 
OAuth and actual single sign-on is starting to be expanded on that. A lot of the customers want to be able to log in their machine and be able to ex access their applications. That's a growing uh, situation. As you can see in the previously, the uh, single sign-on was very limited, very um, uh, not very detailed in it. Now it has become more solution creation on it. It is now more detailed on there. Uh, IMP, as you can see, is expanded in uh, uh, the uh, questions for you. Again, IMP is not going away. It depends on the situation of your customers and stuff, so it's very valuable to know on there. And I'm sure want, most of you are very happy that uh, Unity Express has been removed there. Since Unity Express has been into life and then we're no longer test uh, using it, we are no longer testing on it. So when we talk about the advanced core, now what we go on on here is we reduce the CME advance and just basically speaking with SRST. The reason is SRST is the technology that is adapting. As you guys are more, more enough aware, cloud and on-prem is still popular. However, there's becoming more and more of a hybrid solution. So SRST is going to be evolving. So SRST is still a valuable technology to know because if you have a hybrid situation where cloud is your primary, you must need to fall back onto on-prem. We still need to know how to do that kind of uh, configuration. Cube is giving us much more flexibility, just again with SIP being more of a uh, adopted protocol out there. Cube is giving us a different flexibilities to be able to route calls different places and change SIP messages and such like that. So we're expanding the configuration and testing on, on Cube in there. If if you don't if I didn't if you don't know what Cube is Cube is Cisco Unified Border Element. Again, some more things that have increasing is recording. Since most of the more and more contact centers are utilizing Voice over IP, uh, recording is becoming very important to be able to be flexible and to be able to sort support contact center necessary uh, requirements. Uh, uh, one of the things that is starting to grow also is the cloud mobility. We, it's one of those things that are touched on there in this configure in this topic in there. But again, it is a describe level, and I just want to reinforce is like what Stacy says: describe is less base the basic knowledge of the end technology. And as we can go to configuring, it's going to be a little bit more in depth in it. And then troubleshooting in basically covers you know your configuration and your description. So it's a technology that you should absolutely understand. And then we'll push on to the edge technology. Since the cloud uh, solution is uh, adopting more and more, Expressway has become a little bit reduced. It's not bad, but it's now a technology that we just cover a, a few things on there just to make sure you have a concept of it and understanding of it and everything on that. Um, the the um, Web ar architecture is now something that is a technology that's brought into there that now that we're supposed to be able to talk about and understand because more and more customers are now adopt adopting the cloud solutions in there. And again, single sign-on and OAuth is a couple of technologies that are spreading more and more because customers want to be able to just log in their app to laptop and be able to, to use all their apps without having to do multiple logins. So that, that covers with the rest of the edge technologies. I wanted to give you guys a um, opportunity to put a face to uh, somebody that reads your comments. Those comments that you put in exams are actually looked at. And I am one of those people that are uh, look at them. And I just want to give you a chance to hear some feedback from my point of view. Uh, one of the biggest com comments that I see is it doesn't follow best practices. Well, just to make you aware, these exams are not about testing you with your knowledge on your best practices. It's about testing you to know your the technology. It wants to make sure that you have the experience in it and you've read the tech, the uh, the documentation and been able to apply it. So when you take your exam, just make sure that you look at the answers and just say find out the best uh, solution for your situation because you most of you work with customers and understand best practices doesn't always apply. That's why we test to make sure you just understand the technology. Understanding the best practices is good, but you need to understand the technology so you can adapt to your customers. And this is important to know, so you guys know that we're testing you to make these exams valuable for you. So that when, when people interview you, they know what you're supposed to know by these exams. 
And then last on the resources, notice at the top, the blueprint is your most important thing. Everything is documented or created by the blueprint. So when you look at your Cisco press or you look at any labs, or you go to any learning centers, it's based on the blueprint. I recommend you to bring your blueprint anytime you actually go through any of these learnings, reading documentations, and make sure you mark down that did you cover the technology and the topic of that blueprint so that way you can apply and make sure that you make a successful uh, attempt at your exam. And then with that, I'm ready to turn it over to Tanner and say if anybody has any questions on this. Thank you, Bobby. We do have just maybe I would say two, uh, maybe three questions for you if you're up for it. And Stacy might want to um, jump in on one of these as well. First, we um, have a lot of folks asking about um, some of the study materials that are published out there. For example, Cisco Press Books. Mm -hmm. And if the book that they purchased or the current versions of the book cover, you know, the topics listed for version 1.0, you know, how can they fill the gap to 1.1? What's our recommendations for folks that are looking to fill the gap up to 1.1 of the exams? The best thing I would tell, and, and this is for me, even when I study for exams, I always have my blueprint with me. So when they write the book, it's based off the blueprint. So if you got 1.0, make sure you have 1.1 with you and whatever space that you have gaps in, notice that they don't cover, then make sure you fulfill, fulfill those gaps with any other documentation, CCO, or um, any learning events when you go to them to make sure that it is covered. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Bobby. The starting with the exam topics documentation as your guidance is a great first step, definitely. Um, Stacy, would you also maybe like to talk about the release notes a little bit to kind of help guide folks on kind of really what to focus on? Sure. So the release notes are a great thing to look at because you can see exactly what has changed. We laid it out like Bobby showed in a snapshot of each of the release notes for all four exams and you can, you know, definitely see this is what it used to be. This is what it is now. And you can see those differences, you know, easily just by looking at the release notes. And we detailed every single thing that we added or took away from each of the blueprints in the release notes. So, like Bobby said, along with the exam blueprint that will tell you, you know, detailed um, domains and tasks that you need to be familiar with and study on, the release notes are also something, you know, great to have when you're looking at the blueprint so you see what the additions and the things that we took out of the blueprint. Yeah, thank you, Stacey and Bobby both. And I'll just mention that um, we'll share a link here in the WebEx chat uh, shortly for where the release notes can be found in case um, folks don't have that yet, um, as well as one of our follow-up pieces of communication in the emails. Thank you for attending. Sorry we missed you emails. Uh, we'll also include uh, a link to that roadmaps page and additional resources for folks, including a learning matrix um, that the exam program management team has put together for the core exam specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and then also for the folks watching on the live stream, we'll be sure to make sure that the uh, roadmap link is included um, in the description of the live stream over on the YouTube channel as well. Um, and you know, I just want to kind of reinforce that that self study approach a, a touch there as well. Like Bobby and Stacy mentioned, follow the updated exam topics to conduct maybe a bit of self study um, while we wait for supplemental training and learning resources to be further developed and published and made available from our publishing and our learning partners as well. Um, and then let's see. Bobby, one more question, if you don't mind, um, from a technical standpoint, um, for oops, the chat jumped on me there. Um, for cloud version 1.1, um, mm -hmm. have CMS and CMM been removed completely? Can you speak to that specific question? Actually, that's more of a Stacy question, but I can answer it. That, that exam has been retired the conferencing exam, which these were uh, included on. So they've been retired. They were retired when, Stacy. They were retired last month in April. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, the, that exam is no longer there. Uh, I know our learning team says the uh, training is still there if they want to learn mm -hmm. it, but the exam is no longer there. Okay. 
That's fair enough. Thank you very much. And then we do have some more questions that, oh, sorry, Bobby, did you want to add? No, I wanted to make sure, I know I made the comment about the uh, people making comments on exams. I just want to let the people know it's very valuable for comments on there. Don't be discouraged that I, I made some statements on uh, what I saw as common. Comments are valuable. We use them. So don't yes. be discouraged to use them. Yes, definitely. Definitely. The feedback is definitely reviewed by the team. All right. Thank you so much, Bobby and Stacey both with that. I'll keep us moving um, on over to Ben. There's more questions that have come in that we'll tackle written and then we'll come back for additional um, verbal Q and a at the end as time permits. Otherwise, we do have our open discussion thread on the CLN forum as well. So uh, let's see, Ben, if you're ready to go, I think we are. Yes, I am ready and hope everyone can hear me. And I want to thank, uh, take this opportunity to thank everyone for coming into the session. I know uh, you guys are very busy. This applies not only to the attendance, but also uh, the panelists. So I have also with me uh, my SME uh, who helps uh, very actively help me to design and de develop CCIE collaboration contents, uh, who is one of the panelists today, and that's Isham. So I would like to thank again Isham for dropping in. So again, thank you, Stacy and Bobby, uh, for taking us through with the changes in the CCMP collaboration 1.1 updates and change. So the next in the next uh, section, I will take us through the collaboration version 3.1 updates and also cover some preparation resources. Before we go into the uh, technical details, just like what uh, Stacy and Bobby let us do, I also wanted to just spend a couple of minutes on why the Cisco team uh, created and published the, the, uh, the roadmap, right? The certification roadmap for all the tracks. And the, there are there really are three core reasons that we we make this change. Uh, the first really is to align with the technology, right? So technologies are evolving rapidly, and there are changes happening all the time. So our old models of refreshing the blueprints uh, every three to five years no longer scale, right? We the last thing we want our candidates who's preparing themselves in certifying in the technologies to study for the obsolete stuff, right? So again, one the first and foremost reason of this uh, publishing this uh, a roadmap is to make sure that every year we review the blueprints and make sure that we remove the old and add in in incremental and manageable bite-sized information so that uh, on the blueprint or topics on the blueprint so that it gears you towards you know uh, acquiring those new and relevant knowledge so the second takeaway or the reason why we come up with the certification roadmap is in fact make sure that what you're preparing is relevant right so relevancy in your preparation uh, you know, it, it not only supports your, your job role today, but also prepares you for the future, right? The third main reason for this uh, certification roadmap is really predictability, right? All of us are onto the certification journey in different stages, but if you could predict uh, what is coming every year, or when changes will be published every year, that it helps you plan your certification pursuit and journey much better, right? So you can wait in, on, okay, so next year, uh, there will be, uh, in Q2, there will be some changes coming, right? And, and it really helps you to plan out how you want to uh, 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 plan your time to to an out, I mean, in addition to your busy work schedule and in your current job roles, to to make your certification pursue. So um, the next uh, slide I wanted to uh, just just take us through some of the uh, what I think are important elements in this major revision versus minor revision. Really, on the left hand side are all the 
kind of characteristic uh, of major revision, right? There are really a couple of things I want to direct your attention on. The number one is that the major revision will not go away, meaning that since we're making minor revision annually, it doesn't mean that we don't make major revision anymore. However, the major revision take place typically when two things happens. One is that the, the hardware related to a particular technology needs changing, right? So for major revision, one trigger for a major revision is hardware change. A second trigger, so to speak, for major revision, which is not really shown on the slide, is that if the technologies has changed so much, uh, let's just assume that, uh, you know, in three, three to five years, you know, 80% of Cisco collaboration customers move to WebEx, right? And that is a trigger for us to change to a major revision, meaning that we now need to not only, I mean, we don't have hardware in the CCIE lab anymore, but say um, we need to change the blueprint domains. The domains are the major buckets of how we sort uh, the topics in uh, in a particular technology, you know, across all our certification. So whenever there is a major revision, that typically involves also domain change. So that's the second key point I want to make. And and uh, and and the minor revision, Stacy already covered, so I will not repeat. So and another big thing that everyone needs to, uh, uh, I, I think, is, is beneficial to bear in mind, is that. For minor revision, like the one that we're going through at the CCMP and CCIE, the, it is no more than 20% change. Even though the topics might suggest otherwise, or when you see it, oh my God, there's a WebEx, there's a, there's a cloud. But again, bear in mind that it's a minor revision after all, and there are no more than 20% change. And, and so these are the kind of highlights I want to take the time to make sure that everyone attending this webinar or viewing the recording is, is mindful of. Okay, so now we'll go through the uh, collaboration 3.0 uh, blueprint domains. As I mentioned, a minor revision involves no blueprint domain change. So the domain that you see on the slide for 3.1 and its associated weighting is identical to that of 3.0. So we still have seven domains that did not change, but the topics within each domain changed. Ooh, let me try to move the slides. Okay, so then the, in the next seven slides or so, I'm gonna take you through, uh, you know, kind of highlight of what changed. So these came directly from and the release notes, which Stacy already covered. So there is a release notes also when we publish a, a revision, we always publish a release note. The purpose of release note is really to highlight the key changes, right? I want to make sure that you understand that it is not a all inclusive side by side comparison of each blueprint, no, right? What it does is that it highlights the changes. So, so what you see now, say for domain one for CCIE version 3.0, this is not all the changes, meaning that if you look at 3.1, I mean, we, we picked like two domains in this case of the CCIE collab 3.0, right? But that is a, it's a great way for us to illustrate and to communicate to you, you know, what changed. This is a good example for domain one, protocol and API. The domain, again, is the same but you can see that we removed MGCP, right? I mean, on the old, on the old uh, blueprint, actually 3.0 blueprint with MGCP, that's removed. Also, what we do in a revision like this is that we consolidate topics into, uh, to beef up a more relevant topic, as in this case, SIP. You can see that on the right-hand side for the new blueprints, we actually consolidated previously some SIP protocol uh, related areas into a single topic. So we have five subtopics under SIP signaling protocols, right? And then also on the now, I mean, I'm 
trying to get you back and forth, but sorry about that. But then for, for the 3.0 uh, blueprint, we, in, uh, we, we had a messaging protocols, which is, which is not, I mean, still around, but again, it's, it's kind of losing its, uh, its uh, uh, relevancy. So we have removed the messaging protocols from the 3.1 blueprint and also security protocols, whether it's TLS negotiation or certification verification, is becoming very important knowledge. Every collaboration professional will uh, need to know, and I, I hope you know they, they will need to exercise that knowledge in a practical way in their work. So that's why we added this topic in the domain one for security protocols uh, for TLS. So moving on to the next domain, uh, domain two is uh, infrastructure and quality of service. And uh, this is a good illustration of, you know, the change in terms of, you know, adding what is more relevant. So if you could direct you to the right hand side of the slides under troubleshooting voice, video and uh, voice and video qualities, we added media quality troubleshooting in the WebEx control hub, right? So we want candidates uh, preparing for the collaboration lab to know, you know, what are the capabilities and how do you leverage these new features in a WebEx control hub, uh, uh, you know, either as a standalone cl uh, cloud calling or use it as cloud connected UC to, uh, to, 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 to be a one stop for all your analytics needs uh, for troubleshooting. And that's available in the WebEx control hub. These are the relevant information that we hope that you will gain um, by preparing for these uh, revision. And I believe it will help you uh, in, in, in your work and in, in, in engaging in meaningful, relevant conversations with your customers. And, and another case in this domain is certificate management, right? So we added a premise-based PSTN gateway, how how certificate management is a place into that, and also Cloud Connect the UC, as I mentioned. Uh, going over to domain three, and um, so DAO plan, this is a very uh, good illustration of adding topics, right, in this revision. We added uh, DAO plan features for WebEx calling, as well as um, telephony features for WebEx calling. We removed the uh, ESRST and added and uh, the WebEx calling survivability gateway because that, uh, again, you need to know, not only know what it is, but you need to be able to tell, you know, how is that relevant and what is the implication when it comes to the design uh, for, uh, for today and tomorrow's um, collaboration networks. And uh, uh, domain four, again, actually Bobby uh, sort of covered this already, but this is a great illustration of, um, of you know, what happens to these topics uh, when, you know, from one revision to another. In this particular uh, domain, you can see um, we, we, we have removed um, self-provisioning, right? The self-provisioning is no longer there. We have uh, enhanced or beefed up securing endpoints. Before, if you look at the existing 3.0 blueprint, you see securing endpoint. Well, what does that mean, right? Uh, what do I need to study? So in this new blueprint, we added the specific things, what we want to assess you on the subtopics on securing endpoints. So we kind of beefed up these subtopics so that you have more directions in your preparation. and. Last but not least, we talk about removal, we talk about, uh, you know, enhancing, and then uh, the 4.6 is really adding a new topics and it's related subtopics of cloud clients, right? So again, removal, uh, beefing up, consolidation, and add. These are the changes uh, in the topics when we talk about these revisions. Um, domain five, I'm not going to really go through everything, we remove the PRI gateway as it's losing relevancy. We really added the cloud-based PSTN and the premise-based PSTN for WebEx calling. Again, these, the knowledge of these 
in your preparation is going to make you very relevant in today's collaboration conversation as a professional or expert. That's the reason that we're adding this. Um, domain six, uh, CMS. I saw, I, I, I saw somebody ask about CMS and CMM, and Bobby already answered that. That particular um, uh, vertical or, or, or is, is no longer there on the CCMP uh, side. For the CCIE side, uh, CMS is also uh, sort of like a, 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 a topic that is greatly impacted. We have not completely removed CMS as a on-prem um, WebRTC conferencing solution. However, we have reduced uh, the, the percentage in these topics. As you can see on in the old blueprint, we have you know CallBridge and WebBridge and we have uh, high availability, we have secure conferencing, and all those are not in the uh, version 3.1 uh, blueprint, right? However, uh, actually it's not shown on this release notes, but then CMS is still there in the new 3.1 blueprint under 6.2, I believe. There is still a ad hoc conferencing, and under ad hoc conferencing topics, CMS is still there. So uh, it has not, been completely removed from, from the CCIE lab. However, later on when I show the uh, equipment and software list, you will see that CMS is you no know, longer on the software list, mean, which means that we will test CMS on the design module, meaning that theoretical, you know, planning and design only. You will not have any uh, hands-on uh, topics or, or, pra or practical topics in the lab exam for CMS. So the last domain, um, we removed presence, uh, we consolidated the IMMP, and one thing that we removed, which we uh, spend quite a bit of time talking about, is the UCCX. The, the, the Contact Center Express has been in the CCIE blueprint whether it's voice or collaboration since day one. So this is the first blueprint that we are removing uh, this uh, software because we felt like as a collaboration expert, uh, we want to really focus on um, you know, the core connect collaboration technologies as well as um, you know, what is coming up for, for the future in, in, in hybrid and cloud side of collaboration. So we've added WebEx Contact Center and the WebEx bots that you will be able to. So it, for the WebEx bots on the right hand side, you, you see that we actually uh, ask specifically, you need to know how to implement from a provided Python script code skeleton and make modification. It's similar to the notion of how we used to test UCCX scripting, right? We don't really ask you to create a gigantic fancy custom script, right? We only ask you to edit, uh, make meaningful edits to the provider script. The same thing is transferring to WebEx bots. Like we will provide a skeleton Python code and you will need to to implement that, maybe to make uh, certain edits. So these are the changes um, that I want to highlight uh, for each domain. So the next slide, um, how are we doing on time? I think we're okay. So it's uh, talking about the software updates, right? Uh, I, I, you know, the, the, the key thing that I wanted to call out is really for the core collaboration applications in this minor revision, uh, for CCIE Colab, uh, we upgraded all the core application tool uh, from 12.5 to 14.0, right? That includes the uh, communications manager, the IMMP, a Unity connection, as well as Expressway. So we also, one change is that uh, the gateway, uh, we have moved on from using the CR, uh, CSR 1KV uh, virtual router to the new Catalyst 8000V uh, virtual router. So that uh, these uh, the Catalyst 8000V will be our um, gateway or even on-premise gateway uh, in the context of a WebEx calling. And we all, two things that's sort of brand new in the software really is the WebEx app, right? I think I heard Bobby sort of uh, made the introduction that uh, the you know, WebEx app has becoming the prevailing uh, collaborative uh, end-user application 
uh, for a lot of a lot of us, right? Cisco internal included as well. And how to set that up and how to plan for the migration from Jabber to WebEx app. These are the things that you need to be aware of. Again, these are the things that it will keep you uh, in the very relevant and meaningful, meaningful uh, conversation in your workplace. It's probably already taking place, but it's even better that uh, then you can leverage that knowledge that you gain from working, uh, you know, uh, today's uh, collaboration network onto your uh, Cisco uh, certification pursuit as well, right? So either way, it's a win for you. And uh, one big items on the software list is the WebEx Control Hub, right? It's, uh, it, 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 is intelligent uh, that uh, allow us to connect to the cloud collaboration and uh, it's making a lot of people nervous on how are you we're going to test in the lab uh, i'll be honest with you i'm also nervous about it because for the first time other than connecting to live cisco documentations that we need to make sure that each pod has a, a way out to the uh, control hub and then control uh, and configure basically deploy or implement uh, and um, cloud collaboration or hybrid collaboration from the control hub. So that is something very new. Again, it might seem daunting right now. Actually, I, I like I said, I, I'm nervous about that too. Um, but again, that's going to increase your value as a, um, a collaboration uh, professional because you know not only what it is, you also need to know, you know how to migrate you know, from on-prem to cloud. And so all these will really only make you a more uh, relevant uh, collaboration professionals in preparing for this exam. So here's a sample topology. I don't know, we always use it as a sample, which is true, right? This is not the final lab topology, but I just want to um, kind of guide you uh, through it a little bit again. I want to stress that 80% of the topics and content between, you know, revi minor revision is still the same, meaning that you, you should expect to see a lot of on-prem stuff still, right? Uh, HQ, Side B, all with on-prem applications. But then one new thing, as I mentioned in the previous slide for software updates, we now have a uh, Yet another cloud, right? There are almost too many clouds uh, on this uh, 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 picture uh, the, uh, topology, but now there's a WebEx cloud as well because each pod will have its connection out to the control center, uh, uh, to the control hub, right? The WebEx control hub. And then in the control hub, you're gonna uh, configure your um, WebEx app, right? There, there will be a web, web app and there will be premise-based local gateway uh, that you will need to, um, you will need to uh, configure. Uh, that's, that's, you know, the, 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 like we, we want to ease into these changes instead of, you know, uh, giving you a forklift update, meaning that again, this is a minor revision, meaning that this, when you come into the lab after July 20th, you're not going to see a WebEx lab, right? Whatever you have in, invested in preparing for the 3.0 blueprint, 80% of that still applies. So that is something to remember. Even though we have, yes, brand new elements, but then remember that 80% of what you have prepared should still apply in this uh, minor revision blueprint. So key takeaways. Uh, I sort of mentioned that, but I thought it would be nice to, you know, as a uh, as a takeaway as we kind of closing out this webinar for CCIE version 3.1 is that again, no change in blueprint, domain, and weights. We talked about that, right? And changes are in the topics in each domain where we remove some obsolete topics and we add more relevant topics. And I think we, throughout uh, my part uh, of this presentation, we have kind of uh, uh, talk, that, uh, talk about that over and over. So what should you expect to see, of, especially for these new topics in the new collaboration 3.1 lab? One is that for design module, I recommend you focus on preparing and reading up onto designing and planning on-prem to cloud migration, 
right? So how do we, I mean, which is, again, a lot of our customers are going through. I mean, I think Ishan, my SME, can, can attest uh, this point is that he spent 90 plus time, 90 plus percent of his time helping customer to, to migrate, right? Or to start planning and thinking through how to migrate from on, the on-prem workloads to the cloud, right? So, so that is an important area you should focus on for the new design module in the CCIE Collaboration 3.1 lab. Also, for the hands-on, like dual module, you need to really uh, add in cloud as something that you need to know, right? Deploying and operating cloud uh, and enabling cloud workloads to uh, for collaboration. Again, the on-prem stuff is not going away, right? So it's still going to be there, and that knowledge you can still demonstrate in the lab and 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 actually for 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 a significant chunk of the lab, right? Again, 80-20 rules, right? So, but then you do need to have a knowledge of the cloud and have some hands-on on navigating and provisioning in the WebEx Control Hub. So again, the key takeaway really for this minor revision, whether it's on an MP or IE, is that your preparation will ensure relevancy for today and for the future. That's the key takeaway that's, uh, that's uh, for me to share with you today. Uh, I just uh, want to quickly go over uh, the preparation resources. The first one, uh, documentation uh, is available. This really has not changed. You will have, yeah, you will have access to documentations on the web. And in, when you sit in the lab exam, you can leverage those doc, uh, doc, uh, documentations. Um, again, one new element that will be uh, you need to connect to the lab is that we will have to allow each part a access to WebEx Control Hub, right? So that is something uh, that is new coming up. And in terms of other study resources, um, it's a pretty much the same as how um, uh, we have on the CCNP side. Uh, so the release notes, Stacy already covered that, you know, what it is. It's really a snapshot of select the highlights of the changes. So quickly, when you read that, you know, okay, so these are the key things that changed. And, uh, you know, start your preparation with a new blueprint. It's never a, it's always a worth of your time to, to, to study and to review the blueprints uh, in detail. And it is your responsibility, if I may even say that, to compare the blueprints in full, meaning that pull up, you know, side by side screen of an older blueprint and new blueprint and just go through it. And if you print it out, if you're like me, old school, I print out and highlight, do that, right? You know, you highlight the change because um, that is for you not only to understand what changed, but also start planning, you know, how you can prepare for these changes or how you can kind of regroup your efforts in, uh, you know, uh, kind of re reallocate. I think that's the right word, your efforts in, you know, you don't need to study for these certain obsolete topics or the topics are removed and then you can reallocate them to the new topics. The learning matrix is also updated. I believe CCMP has a learning matrix too. It really contains, uh, is organized by the blueprint. So for each blueprint topics and subtopic, we have different categories of learning materials uh, that's at your disposal that you can, you can, um, you can use to prepare. That could be Cisco documentation, uh, you know, the, the software um, uh, user's guide and the design guide, SRND, and Cisco Live presentations and the VODs. And, and we really redid for collaboration, I think CCMP as well. We, we, CCMP, I think it's a new, a new supplementary study material that they provide us starting with this. Uh, it's a very useful documentation. And then we have Cisco Live, all, always they have an on-demand library that has a lot of great information. And last but not least, um, join us in the uh, collaborations communities on the Cisco Learning Network, right? Uh, we have um, study groups and we also have a community forum. Uh, so uh, join and share your knowledge and ask a question. Uh, 
to a group of people who is you know sharing the same certification goal with you and help each other and that's the best way to learn in my opinion so um this brings me to the end of my my section and i'll be more than happy uh, to entertain any questions Thank you so much, Ben. And also, of course, thank you, Bobby and Stacy as well. And a big thank you to Ishan and Tanner and Carlo for helping out in the Q&A that we've had so far in the written Q&A. Um, very, very much appreciated. And thank you for all the great questions that we have had come in. Before we jump into questions, um, and, and folks might start to trail off as we reach the end of the hour, just a reminder that follow-up emails will be sent to all of the attendees of the live webinar, as well as folks who have registered but were unable to make it. And those links will include um, all of the key resources that have been shared in the presentation today, the release notes, the exam topics documents, the learning matrix documents, et cetera. So um, please don't worry about trying to keep track of, of links that we've shared. Those will be sent via email if you're attending the live webinar or if you registered for the webinar previously. And also we do have still, of course, the follow-up discussion thread in the Cisco Learning Network community forum space as well. We'll be sure, we've shared that link in the chat window a couple of times, but we'll pop it in there one more time just to make sure folks have it. And with that, let's jump into a couple of the questions. We've had a lot of great questions come in that have been answered in written form. We've had a few that were kind of consistent questions that I thought would be worth bubbling up um, to the verbal portion as well, as well as a couple very specific kind of somewhat technical questions as well. Um, let's talk about self-study. Let's talk about study resources a bit further. Um, so we know for the great guidance from from everybody self-study by following the exam topics researching the new release notes um the question keeps coming up about cisco press books and i would like to just specifically mention in regards to that question is that cisco press self-manages their own publishing timeline as they're owned and operated by pearson publishing um so while we definitely figure that they will be updating their any books that they have available today to stay relevant to the exam topic and the road the the roadmaps, um, we can't necessarily speak to any timelines specifically for Cisco Press Books because they do operate their own publishing schedule. However, they do have on the Cisco Press website a roadmap uh, page as well. I don't have that link handy, but if you go to ciscopress.com, you should be able to find a roadmap page there to see what their roadmap looks like. Um, for our own courses, our digital self-study courses, either the individual single purchase standalone courses that are available for purchase today on the Learning Network store, or the courses that we're publishing in the new digital uh, platform, Cisco U. Bobby, I'm sorry, uh, Ben or Stacy, would you be able to speak to some of the course availability from the, our digital um, course development team as well? I do not think on the CCIE side, any uh, digital uh, study uh, yet. However, I do want to add the comment uh, as we had this conversation, as we prepare for this webinar, there is plan to come up with um, uh, the practice lab for this new version of CCIE collaboration. So, however, I, I can only say that because uh, it is uh, still in the planning. Ideally, we want to make the practice lab available before we push out the new new topics, right? And so that you can prepare. However, in this case, the practice lab will come after uh, the CCIE 3.1 uh, becomes live, but you should see some practice lab focusing on these WebEx technologies, particularly uh, uh, before the end of the year. That's what I can uh, comment. And uh, hopefully, you know, that at least you, you should be you should expect to see some collaboration practice lab. The beauty of these practice lab is that they have the same user interface 
as we have in the actual lab exam, meaning that the scenario, how you read the questions, how you assess the topology. In this case, for WebEx, you know, you can actually add, you know, uh, connect to the WebEx control hub and, you know, uh, do certain tasks. And it's all part of the practice lab. And it really makes a, a good um, preparation resource when available. So stay tuned. And as far as the CCNP um, course material goes, I know the course team is working on updating all the, the you know, the digital learning as far as the collab exams, the NP exams. Mm -hmm. And like Bobby had mentioned, even though we retired the 825 conferencing exam, that course is still going to be available. Um, I don't have a specific dates as far as when all the course material is going to be ready for the version 1.1, but I know mm -hmm. they are working on updating those. Perfect. Thank you so much, Stacey. Um, and Ben, thank you very much as well. And to Ben's point about labbing, um, Stacey or Bobby, would you possibly be able to speak to any labbing recommendations for the NP level candidates? Um, folks are asking if packet tracers enough or Wireshark or Cisco modeling labs, D clouds, any recommendations you might be able to make for a lab? Sorry no, about I'm so that. Sorry, Bobby. Yeah, oh, there no, you go. I was muted. Sorry. Um, on that one, I would have to follow up with you and give you more guidance on that one. If you can uh, find a way where I can give it, get, do the research and provide it to them, and then hand it out, I would greatly be, would like to do that for them. Yeah, definitely. We have our community forum space, and we have our open discussion thread for this session here. So we can definitely continue that, um, kind of dive deep into that uh, in the forum space. Okay. Perfect. Very much. And so let's see here. We'll tackle just a couple of more. We have reached the top of the hour, which is the scheduled end time for the call, but we'll keep the Q and a going for a few more moments here. And again, thank you for attending the live session uh, for those that were able to make it today. And let's try to work through a couple more questions. So, Ben, I believe you mentioned UCCX specifically in your portion. And there are some follow up questions about, you know, UCCX and UCCE and their kind of, you know, relevancy. And, you know, would you mind just touching on that again about the fact that um, I think that they're, they've been retired from the, at least from the lab exam. I'm sorry, yes, from the CCIE lab exam. Is that correct? Yes, yes, that's a great question. Actually, yes, UCCE, the express version of the contact center, uh, Cisco's contact center offering. Uh, has been removed uh, from the uh, CCIE collaboration lab topic 3.1. That said, it, uh, you know, that removal is really not a statement from us saying that it's no longer relevant. Actually, UCCE and UCCX, they are, it has always been a highly specialized a highly technical and highly specialized uh, discipline within Cisco's collaboration products and services. So ideally, we, I mean, it's currently, we already have a specialist uh, kind of cert that cover that. Uh, that I, I think it will continue. However, it depends on where the contact center will evolve. Uh, probably we will evaluate every year as we have this discussion. Um, and actually, another thing with the, uh, the, the cert roadmap is that the discussion all also involves the addition of certification, right? Meaning that uh, it, it's not always oh, how we change the existing certification. It's also about how we add new certification when it's um, uh, uh, relevant and still very much needs to be recognized on the field. And C UCCX and UCCE really falls into that category. So the conversation will come and again, it is not to understate the fact that it's a highly specialized and valuable skill for Cisco's collaboration services and as a, as a product. Okay, thank you so much, Ben. And you know, I, I heard both you and 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 I believe Bobby and maybe Stacy as well talk about how um, the changes to the exam portfolio does not necessarily indicate a change in direction for Cisco as a company overall. 
right? And so one of the questions that came in actually is kind of relevant to that topic. And does it mean that Cisco will Cisco will retire the on-prem conference uh, conferencing in the market? Um, would anyone like to share some thoughts or perspective on that topic? Can do that. So keep in mind, we're making these exams irrelevant. So they're makes you uh, valuable in the, in the field. Just because we remove it in there does not mean that it's going to be retired. It just may be a matter of it's not producing the value for the certification for you, but that doesn't mean Cisco is going to retire. If you ever think something's going to be retired, the best people to talk to is your account manager, your associated partners. Yeah, don't don't rely on the exams as direction of what Cisco is going. We are looking at what's most valuable, what's is most popular, and which is most uh, beneficial for you. So when you say I'm certified CCMP or CCIE, uh, prospective uh, managers will know what your knowledge is and what your value is. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, ben or Stacey, would you like to add any additional context to that? Or Yeah, I actually, I agree with Bobby's assessment. Really, it's not a statement, uh, you know, what is appearance uh, or not on the blueprint uh, is not really a statement from Cisco on the future of a particular product or solution. CMS in particular is still very much widely used and a very important piece of uh, on-prem collaboration uh, conferencing solution. And uh, it's really the customer's investment, right? I mean, they did not invest into this technology uh, and its features and benefits, you know, to use it only like a few years, right? So they will continue to use it. Cisco is committed to supporting it. And just um, because it, 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 like its weight reduced in between our revision doesn't mean that it, the product is going away. Just like Bobby said, it means that from a certification standpoint, we felt like candidates preparing for these updates should focus more of their time on other technology instead of that. Yep, and just to add that, what, what, what Bobby and Ben said, as far as um, the, the products and the things that we, you know, test on in the, the CCMP exams, at least, we, we test on things that are on the blueprint, but also if something is EOL that's on the blueprint, and we just haven't had a chance to do that, the, the minor revision to get it out of the blueprint, if it's still being supported, we do still and can test on it. So just because something is, um, you know, end of life doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be out of the blueprint because, you know, just depending upon when we do those revisions, if it was taken out of the uh, blueprint or not. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then um, I see just, I think, one last question that we'll tackle verbally if everyone has a moment still, and then we'll wrap up the uh the live portion of the session and like i mentioned we'll do some follow-up in the community etc and so um cl auto exam specifically was mentioned and um stacy um, i'm hoping that maybe you might be able to speak to any digital self-study course offerings um, to support folks that are looking to specifically strengthen their automation skills for collaboration or just recommendations on how they might prepare for that exam um, the CL Auto, even though the, the CL Auto is part of the collaboration uh, portfolio as far as if it's one of the concentration exams, it's actually managed by the DevNet uh, exam program manager. And so it got updated just like the collaboration exams did last month. Um, but as far as, you know, self-study or anything like that, any materials relating to it, I would just suggest going on the CLN or Cisco.com and looking at the DevNet um, portion of that, you know, the certification, the DevNet certification, and then looking, you know, you can go to self-study material and, and look, you know, that way. Okay, yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. So kind of the same message, right? Review the exam topics, um, review the study, the learning material, re review the release notes, et cetera. Um, for preparation for that exam. Yep, exactly. Perfect. Thank you so much. And then with that, I think we'll go ahead and wrap up the live portion of the call. We'll um, take a look in the Q and A to see if there's any more written Q and A that we can work to address, and or look to follow up with everybody in the Learning Network Community Forum space as well. Ben, Bobby, Stacy, thank you so much once again. 
Ishan and Tanner, thank you for your help in the Q&A. And thank you, everybody, for attending the live session.